Hi guys, it's Lynn here. I hope you're having an amazing day. Now today guys, this is another video vlog and uh, yesterday I brought in a lot of the ones that are not cold hardy to overwinter inside the house and this is a series, series of a few video vlogs on the types of cacti and succulents that we're not going to be overwintering in the polytunnel because they're not cold hardy. They all need a minimum of about 10 Celsius or certainly um, uh, possibly even higher than that which is why we're bringing these certain ones in and what I've done in the last couple of video vlogs is explaining the reasons why I've chosen the ones to come in and why they're not cold hardy and yesterday we did the Prescius of Prescioposis and some of the um, Selenicerioses and the or all of the Selenicerioses and also the Seleniocerioses and a few other ones as well Pinocerius all ones that cannot take um, um, cold temperatures as I say we heat this polytunnel at a minimum of five degrees during the winter and it usually stays around the 7th sea mark and seven degrees would be around probably 46 degrees Fahrenheit and again 5c will be about 40 41 degrees Fahrenheit and um, we don't some of these cacti can and the succulents certainly some of the cacti can take lower temperatures than that but because we have a selection of different types as you can see we have epi epiphyllum which do prefer to be kept above 5c um, and we also have um, some some that prefer about six and then some that can take two degree we just keep it at around a minimum of five so it's a bit of an all-round balance and then we have this heater here that kicks on um, should it drop below five and thankfully we've not really had to worry about it because so far it's been mild still October but we're bringing plants into overwinter in the in the plant rooms early so um, we can get ourselves organized and before the cold weather really kicks in here and as I say, we brought in the Prescius, Prescioposis and a few others. So if you haven't seen that video, do check that out first and the other ones I've done. And I'm going to be carrying on today and I'm going to be explaining why we, we're going to be bringing these plants in because it's not they're not cold hardy. And um, Hansi is away still. He's gigging with his band. He's a musician. So this is just going to be bringing in um, a selection myself. And then when Hansi's back tomorrow, um, we can then put them away together on the plants. I'll probably do the plant stand and plant room one myself possibly even later on and doing a, a separate video vlog um, but the other ones in the other rooms we're going to be doing together and um, then over the next couple of weeks I'm going to be rearranging because there's going to be a lot more space in here because plants are coming out inside the house um, we'll have more space on the trays and we'll be spreading out the succulents and spreading out some of the cacti there'll be a lot more room and rearranging a few things so there's going to be lots of fun in here so um, lots of future vlogs on cacti and succulents and moving things about <laughs> Um, but as I say, I'm going to be carrying on then taking in the plants, any that are left here that do not want to stay out here for the winter. Now, first of all, we have got here a mellow cacti and the, we have here three mellow cacti in our collection. So these are not cold hardy at all. So I'm going to put these here. This one, this particular one is one that Hans actually grew himself from seed when he lived in Sweden. So this little mellow here it's grew itself all from, all from seed. So isn't it gorgeous? It's going to need to be repotted probably next year now. But um, it's looking so wonderful. Now, the reason why we put in these mellow cacti in, they look like normal types of desert cacti they're very spiny and they often get people often get caught out with this one because they think it's cold hardy especially if they don't know what it is um, mellow cactus is easy to identify when um, it grows its cephalium which is this here this little little orangey thing on the top just move um, this little serious here um, it's very easy to identify because this is the only there's a couple of other cacti that form these cephaliums but it's rare with cacti and mellow cactus being the most the most common one and um, that is a sign there what happens it forms this when it's matured fully matured to form flowers and the flowers come out of this big cephalium at the top and the plant sort of more or less stops growing once it forms this and puts its energy towards growing the cephalium and it can grow very 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 tall um, and this is he starting to come into flower there and the little fruits form around in fact that's actually a fruit because this has been flowering there's the old um, the flower heads that's a little fruit forming there with seed which is wonderful but these like to be kept a minimum of 10 degrees celsius so if you keep these in an unheated greenhouse um, or polyton or anywhere else unheated in the winter they they nearly always die and even if they don't they lose their roots and also because they like to be kept at a minimum degree of 10 celsius which is 50 degrees fahrenheit um, they also like to be kept a little bit watered 
um, during the winter you don't have to keep them permanently moist or anything because they'll also rot they have a dormancy as well but they don't like to be kept totally dry for long periods they do like to be given a slight bit of water during the winter months and allowed to completely dry out in between unlike the other cacti that have to be kept cold and dry these like to be kept warm and um, given a little bit of water throughout the winter if not they tend to lose their roots and once a mellow cactus has lost its roots when it's formed I mean, this cephalium, it's very, very hard, if not almost impossible, to get it to re-root again, no matter how you treat it as a cutting. So just bear that in mind. If you're new to these cacti, so that's why they're going to be overwintered indoors. Now here we have lithops here. Now I'm sure that a lot of you are familiar with the, the old-fashioned lithops, um, the split rock as it's often called. And there's a bit of controversy with these some people i mean we do know some growers that overwinter these in unheated greenhouses and they keep them dry and have no problems but personally i prefer to be on the safe side some people also say you know they're very prone to rot if they're kept in high humidity and stuff we are in uh, ireland in northern ireland which is high humidity so it's no matter how dry they're kept and we don't water them it's just difficult that you know moisture can collect around these as well so i'm just going to be safe does my choice for being in the lithops in the mazems are sort of south african type of growing plants and although we have some of the you know succulents will be south african very cold hardy like the aloes and things they're all staying out here for the winter um, they, we keep them more or less dry, no trouble overwintering them. Just got to be careful with certain ones. Now, Pilosa Pilos. Pilosa Pilos, what a name. Again, one of the Mazems. Um, the Mazem Briamantha. Mazem Briamantha is Oh, I'll put it across the name. That's the family of these group of plants that these certain types come under. And um, as I say, this is often called a lithops when it's, when it's actually not. It's Pilosa Pilos. <laughs> and... Um, this forms a beautiful, as you can see, it's been flowering and a um, lovely big bright yellow flower in the summer months and sometimes even the autumn again. And um, that's the new one coming through. The outer leaves die off, die back, and then it forms a new. But anyway, that's a, another thing again. So that's the reason for bringing that in. Now let's check here what else. Um, yep, Stapelias. Now Stapelias here, I'll just show you. These are not, oops, oh dear, I'm knocking them over. Luckily that's okay. This is a hoodia. Now the Stapelia, Stapelius family um, comes in a different, quite a few different groups of plants here. This is a hoodia, and again, they like to be kept at a minimum of about eight Celsius to ten Celsius, which is about um, probably about forty-eight to fifty degrees Fahrenheit. As I say, we keep it lower than that in this polytunnel, so that has to come indoors. Um, these can sort of rock back now these are some stapelia seedlings that we grew from seed and this seed was gifted to us by olga from olga's dreamland so olga look at these aren't they amazing and there's a little in here i have to show you these guys but i can't take him out he's happy there a little puncher seedling that must have got caught in the seeds and he's just took took root there so it's a little odd one in the family there but he can come in anyway a puncher a very cold hardy um certain types we're not sure what this one is i think it came in with uh possibly with uh, with olga seeds so that's quite interesting it might be one of olga's little punchers but um stapelia is not cold hardy and especially as they're young they have to come in and all of the stapelias as well we have uh, this one stapelia hirsuta but again, we know growers that overwinter these in unheated greenhouses over here, and they say, "Oh, you know, they're finely, they, you know, just they they overwinter okay." But personally, I have read other things about stapelia. I've always overwintered them at a minimum of ten degrees Celsius, so it's something I'm going to carry on doing here, um, there. And again, they're a South African growing succulent, so they're not cold hardy. Told me this beautiful stapelia here, Grandiflorus, is a uh, one of Hansi, so that's a beauty that's going to be coming in as well. So, and anyway, I'll stop this tape that the this video now, I should say. Tape, my god, I'm showing my age, aren't I? Who has tapes these days? I'll stop this video now and um, fill up the tray with um, all the other type of stapiliard type of family of genus of plants and then um, show you why I've chosen them. Now, I'll show you why I've chosen these to bring up to overwinter. Here we have um, Stetsonia corny, and um, this is relatively cold hardy, but I find that last year we kept this, as I say, it was a very, very cold winter. We, 
we sort of struggled keeping the polytoll even at five Celsius. But even though it didn't drop below that, even it's still scarred. As you can see here, this is typical damage due to cold with the um, areoles where they sort of get like, almost like a burnt brown appearance. And although the plants made a good recovery over the over the spring and summer, it's grown and it's fattened up. Um, the damage there that was down to the cold last year. Um, so this we decide to overwinter indoors. Um, speaking to a lot of growers, we said Sonia Corny, they say they prefer a winter minimum of 10 degrees Celsius, 50 degree Fahrenheit. So um, if you have this cactus, be on the safe side and don't keep it any lower than that. Now this is Ulbumania, a beautiful cactus here. Quite hard to find for sale in the shops. This we got from a, a wonderful friend, um, our friend Michael Harrington from Harrington Exotics and it's a beautiful one grown on its own roots which is hard to find as it's often grafted. Now this is not cold hardy at all, this actually needs a winter minimum of about ten, um, certainly 10 degrees Celsius, 50 degree, degrees Fahrenheit and certainly no lower. It's very prone to rot, it's a tropical cactus so um, like the mellow cacti, they like the same type of conditions and they do like to a little tiny bit of water over the winter also so they like to be kept warm um, in a completely warm environment over the winter so um, what I'll be doing when I rearrange the plant tables upstairs we're going to be putting like-minded plants together they might not necessarily look alike but the same type of conditions that they need all together so it's going to be much easier to um, look after them during the winter months now this one here is a Mardinatus Mardinatus um, variety gematus <laughs> again it's not often seen now the marginatus i think it's now under the category of Pach pachycerius now pachycerius um they keep changing all the genus names so it does get confusing but this um sort of winter hardy ish to about sort of six five but because this is still a young plant this is one we got this year from i think it was yeah, Ulic Cactine. Um, it's relatively new to us. It's still a young plant, so we're going to over the overwinter this indoors just to be just to be careful. As you see, there's a little bit of black on there. I think it had an attack of mealybug that we've managed to survive. So it will outgrow the damage, but it is a little bit sensitive because it is young. So we're going to be on the safe side with that one to bring that in as well. Now this one is a Nasticium, um, and this is one of the Mexican type of cacti. And some people say it's cold hardy. Some people say it's not. I because this is a rare plant I've had this for I've ha had this plant I've got to say possibly nearly 30 years and it's tiny but when I bought it it was really tiny it was a tiny seedling and it's very special as you can see it had had spider mite a couple of years ago it's outgrown all the damage on there after treating it successfully with neem oil um, it's recovered well but um, it is a fragile plant um, it can sort of be overwintered coolish and uh, dry in some certain types of greenhouses I mean, people over here some people say they don't heat it but again it's too fragile for me to take the risk so I'm going to be overwintering this one indoors I always do with that one so that's a minimum of about 10 celsius 50 degree fahrenheit again and this one here is a sawaru and um, commonly known as the big uh, cowboy cacti that you often see in the films <laughs> and it may not look nothing like one now and obviously sawaru is carnegia um gigantia and um, just put the little label in there this was actually gifted to me as a young seedling from um Keith Groovy Man 1968 who lives in Arizona he grew this himself from seed and um, we have some very young seedlings of saguaro up in the grow room that are coming on nicely but this is a lovely plant as they look at the top of the spines it's gorgeous and um, this again is not cold hardy at all it is growing in Arizona I think that the, the larger mature plants can certainly take a lot more um, cold than the young this is still it might be hard to, when I call it a seedling because it is like a grown cactus but it is a seedling in the bigger picture of things it's still very young so this will not take anything below 10 celsius 50 degree fahrenheit so this is going to be coming into the grow room and the lights as well and this is a seria spiralis isn't it cool guys we have two of these and those of you who follow us will know that um we bought these only recently about two months ago now from um, urban plant life which is a fantastic garden center in dublin city here in ireland um, amazing but these are not cold hardy either um, they prefer to be kept above 10 celsius 50 degree fahrenheit so i always think that the ones that are not cold hardy they're like a minimum of 10 c 50 degree fahrenheit or higher over the winter and um, the ones that are cold hardy can take below that but this is not one that's is particularly 
um, cold hardy at all so that has to come in and isn't it lovely the way it grows it's like a little helter skelter isn't it guys and again i mentioned about the stapelias there why they're not cold hardy now we've got the euphorbias next this is a euphorbia variegata um the corn cob um it's euphorbia mammillarius and it's nicknamed the corn cob cactus because of its appearance is like a corn cob and this is the variegated form we have another one indoors anyway and we have um a couple of the other ones that are, that are just completely the green version and um as you can, this is an old plant that we got gifted to us and uh you can see it's old because it's got the woody the woody base and this is all the new growth from this year so it's amazing but again it's euphorbia and um, euphorbias like to be kept at a minimum of 10 degree also celsius 50 degree fahrenheit and we have a couple of mammillaries uh, sorry a couple of um euphorbias this one is another one that's going to be coming in now some euphorbias are a lot colder hardier than other ones it really depends um but i always think to be on the safe side bring them in better safe than sorry um this is another euphorbia we have i've had this for absolutely years since i was in my early 20s so this is possibly also whew, 20 good over 25 years anyway um and again it was like a tiny little tot plant when i bought it so it may look small now but it is really big in comparison so that's coming in and then we also have a euphorbia sudanica and this is the lovely leafy one here um to show you um euphorbia is a massive genus um it, it covers such a large variety of plants but i'm talking about the euphorbia succulents um not just the euphorbia garden plants and that because it is a massive 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 genus it's just just huge um, many different types and they're all different care requirements as well and again some are cold hardier than others but always be on the safe side if you have a euphorbia succulent um it usually has the milky sap and it does not like cold it would just go to mush if it goes below 10 c in the winter especially if it's cold kept damp and this sudanica I think it's suffered from spider mite in the past there but it's made a good recovery this is all the new growth from uh, this year which is brilliant so that's going to be overwintered also in the grow room now we've got the spanish moss here hanging up in our polytunnel and we're going to be bringing this into overwinter in our bathroom with some of our other tillancias and they can actually take cold temperatures i mean we've heard of people growing spanish moss in unheated greenhouses and things like that but because we do heat our polytunnel and um, spanish moss likes to be kept humid and a regular water um, we keep in the polytunnel very arid and dry that the heater is probably not going to be ideal for it in here it's going to need a more humid atmosphere so we're going to put it into our bathroom which is a frosted window that gets sun but not direct sun as such so it's going to be an ideal place for these spanish moss so these are going to be coming in as well and we've also got now we're keeping most of the epiphyllums all all in here because they are cold hardy and a lot of our other sort of Ripsalidopsis slumbergeras, we see how they go over the winter. They did fine, they sailed through the polytunnel last year, so no trouble again. And um, now this is a different one. Now this is an epiphyllum. Um, now, it's got the name, it's Marniriara. <laughs> yeah, it's Mar Marniera and it's a Chrysocardium. And um, I reg recently repotted this, I made a video and I repotted this into a hanging basket. And this likes, this is a bit different to other epiphyllums because it sort of crosses in between the Selenicereus family as well as the Epiphyllum family. It's put under the genus of Selenicereus for its flowers and also it's put under the genus of Epiphyllum because of its culture. So it's a bit of a cross between the two. Some say it can take cold temperatures, some say not. Now this is our first first year with this plant we got this when um, when we went to uh, Berlin earlier this year and we visited a cactus nursery and um, I think because we're new to this plant we're going to overwinter indoors and hang it up in front of one of the windows um, just to be on the safe side because it may not most epiphyllum can take five degree uh, minimum and um, may not be a problem but i'd hate to lose this plant i think selenicereus in itself is not a cold gen a cold cactus that can take cold so if it's falling into that category as well we best to take it in to be on the safe side so that's coming in and i think i've probably mentioned all the plants that we're bringing in at the moment and the reason why we're bringing them in hopefully if you have this plant you'll know why they're not cold hardy and you'll know what to um overwinter them at now the reason why we prefer to keep a lot of plants at a lower temperature 
You see, the, the desert type of cacti, if they're kept in a house, and some people don't have a choice if you have a, a windowsill and that's all you can keep it at. It doesn't mean to say your plant's not going to flower, but a lot of the desert types of cacti, such as these ones here, do like to be kept cool of about 7 Celsius, um, about 45, 46 degrees Fahrenheit, and dry, because this can encourage them then to have a proper winter rest and encourage flowers the following year. And you see, they don't often get the winter rest. They'll, if they carry on growing, if the temperatures are too warm, they can grow itoliated because of the shorter day length creates them to um, not form properly. And that's when you often see plants that are, especially cacti, that are very thin at the top and light green. It's because they're continuing to grow in low light levels. So just bear that in mind. If you can keep them cool and dry, um, that's great. But if certain plants have to be overwintered warm, um, as in this case, but we still keep the majority of them fairly dry because this discourages them from growing in short day length. And as I say, we do have grow lights, so um, this also helps prevent itoliation as well, which is the word for the stretched out look, as they say. <laughs> so I think that's pretty much it. Now, obviously, this is Hans's Clerodendron, and this is all tied up on here. This is going to be coming into the into the house, and so is this beautiful. Um, can't remember the name of this guy. This is a not a colius. It's like I think it's a form of nettle, but it's it's beautiful I've got two different varieties here in the pot that also isn't cold hardy so that's going to be coming in as well but um hans is going to be dealing with them and he's back because they're sort of tied up here and he'll be able to um do that and put that into the into the plant rooms and that's pretty much it so this is i won't show you the upstairs now i'm going to be probably tomorrow's vlog i'm going to be rearranging the plant stand um which we have up there i'm going to put in a few things on there and then they're going to be having a go at the tables and then all the other plants we're going to be putting away together and as i said there's loads of space now look at that at the back where all the plants that have been brought in to overwinter we've got loads more space at the back so i'm going to be rearranging all of these plants there's going to be a lot more room so a lot more space and things we've got on the floor can then go up on the table and uh, it's going to look pretty good I think so um, stay tuned for tomorrow's vlog where I'll probably start doing the plant stand guys and um, I hope you enjoyed the video thanks so much for watching and if you want to know more about growing cacti and succulents please do check out my website desertplantsupavalon.com links down below in the about section of this video um, do go over and have a look and go up you click onto the part where it says growing tips hover your mouse over it it'll come up with all different categories like the correct lighting how to water cacti and succulents even the part on the ad about overwintering and everything like that so do check it out guys and um, thank you for all your support as always so guys i want to send you loads of love heaps of happiness and tons and tons of plant power as always from across the emerald isle and until the next video